you don't think El Santo could put a Karate Master in here? Is that what you're saying? No! <laughs> uh, whoa, well, nobody, no, obviously not. Santo does whatever he wants. Let's open this bitch up. Ha! I did that. Heavens to Metroid! It's instructions on how to build a pander! Stop referencing! Just read it! Instructions for building a pander. Step one, build a pander. Hmm, wait, what does this stuff say? I'm not even interested enough to read it. Mecha lecha hi, mecha tiny, tiny ho. Man, these instructions for building a pander are totally bogus. Just when it seemed like we were about to get a break. Why couldn't it have been clear numbered instructions, preferably with a diagram? Wait, you mean like Legos? Like that movie that's coming out last week? Jake, Legos aren't movies. Legos are made out of foot paint. Not a movie, eh? It's a movie, we're reviewing it. Yeah, we're doing that. Welcome to Jake and Trev Review Everything. I'm Trev. And I'm Jake. And today we're going to be taking a look at the Lego Movie. What is happening? You're the special. And the prophecy states that you're the most important person in the universe. That's you, right? Uh, yes. That's me. My fellow master builders. Hello! Lord Business plans to end the world as we know it. There is yet one hope. The special has arisen. I know what you're thinking. He is the least qualified person to lead us. And you are right. I'm not the special. I'm just a regular, normal guy. You have the ability to be the special because I believe in you. This movie is basically centered around Emmett. He's a basic Lego guy. He just builds Lego cities during the day. He's trying to fit in, he doesn't fit in, he's kind of a bland character, and that's how they set him up. So. He's so bland and generic that he has the standard traditional Lego face without any bells or whistles, so that's kind of plays up his regularness. He, at the end of one work day, falls into a hole, and he acquires the uh, piece of resistance. A magical relic of apparently another world to the, to the Lego people, anyway. Uh, that makes him the hero figure of a large myth around the special. He is the one. He is destined to save the Lego people from the evil machinations of our bad guy character, Lord Business. Lord Business is, uh, in, in the world where Emmett lives, he is known as President Business. Hi, I'm President Business, president of the Octan Corporation and the world. Where he comes up with all the rules and he has integrated a very strict uh, instruction and how your day is supposed to go, and he, he, he really enjoys orderliness. Let's take extra care to follow the instructions, or you'll be put to sleep, and don't forget Taco Tuesdays! It, it's, it comes up strangely with like kind of a little, little bit of an Orwellian vibe yeah, to it, yeah. you know? I know uh, there have been definitely mentions of it being North Korean almost. Get the fuck out of here! You get your regular adventure story where he goes out and tries to save like a land. Yeah, he has to rise and meet the expectations of these resistance fighters who are known as the master builders. Uh, people who like to build things in the Lego universes without instructions and just letting their imagination run wild. Including, but not limited to, Superman, Wonder Woman, The Mermaid, Green Ninja, 1980-something Space Guy, Hello. Michelangelo, Michelangelo, and the 2002 NBA All-Stars. And uh, so he, we get to see whether or not Emmett will rise to the occasion and become the special that everyone believes him to be. You're special, man. You reached out and you touched it by the heart. And whether he can stop Lord Business's nefarious plan to freeze everything in, the, in all the Lego worlds uh, in a state of perfect stasis and order. No, that sums it up. We're gonna drop the spoiler alert pretty early here. Um, there it is. You know it. You love it. The spoiler alert. I love it. I love it. Pretty good. So we're just gonna throw out our thoughts about the movie. 
we're going to be kind of up forward about this, uh, you know, no burying the lead. So, uh, without further ado, it's, it's awesome. awesome! It's awesome! Everything is awesome. Everything is cool when you're part of the team. Everything is awesome. It is that awesome. No, it's 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 a really good movie. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Man, I, I was really surprised. Like, you know, I thought it might be mildly entertaining. Are you not entertained? Oh, absolutely, no. The, the amount of comedy in this, humor, uh, the ability to poke fun at itself and other properties. I mean, this movie was made by Warner Brothers. Mm -hmm. And uh, they had a lot of uh, pies in this pie contest. A lot of fingers and mm -hmm. pies. And they had all of their fingers and all of their pies in this pie <laughs> contest. <laughs> Aren't you going to chow down? I'm a vegetarian. But for, for their ability to take that and kind of run with it and play with it and not be ashamed to, you know, mess around with their own properties. Can you just do the line, please? I'm Batman. No. Yeah, the thing to mention is, is that this is not a movie that is just told in the medium of Legos. Right, right. It's not like Battleship where it's like... Battleship, Milton Bradley's great game of strategy. It's loaded with action. No, this no. is this is a Lego movie. Uh, they're the fact that they are Legos and everything is right up front. They, they it's totally affectionate and made with love, and it's it was just put together so well. Oh, I get it. I get jokes. <laughs> as a as a reviewer, I, I have to sit and try to think critically. Well, Lodi frickin' God! Uh, what what can I what can I say is wrong with this movie? And if anything is wrong with it, it's that it's a little predictable. But when I say wrong, that's kind of a stretch. Um, it's predictable in the way that it needs to be without having getting bogged down and trying to set up some elaborate story. What they're really saying is, Anaconda malt liquor gives you <laughs> Normally that's not a stance that I take where it's like, oh, the, mo the plot's super thin, but the movie was fun. I love it. That usually makes a really bad movie. <laughs> See, I think this is too much. I think it's too much. Shh. Right. Um, in many ways, I'm going to say that this movie is an exception to many, many, many rules. Mm -hmm. um, and it just goes to show you that no matter how many times you try to say that this is, this is how you make an entertaining movie, or, or, or this is how you make an entertaining movie, um, you know. There's no magic formula. Right. I don't expect many of you to appreciate the subtle science and exact art. A great deal of the animation is done in stop motion. There is some CG work that, that, that yeah, had you, to be done for various reasons and you know. And you can see it, but it's not really that off-putting. Right. It, it, it never really took me out of the action as far as, as far as like, a, a consistency between shots. We didn't want anyone to know what was what. It was a real hybrid. We got a couple of guys who uh, have been working in animation for some time. Chris McKay. Mm -hmm. uh, he's he's the, the animation big wigs, director. The big big animation director, big wig over at Robot Chicken, mm -hmm. uh, is the animation director of this one. Did that blow your mind? <laughs> Which is weird. <laughs> so here are all the people that are in Awesome Things for Adults that were in this movie. Mm -hmm. For those of you with heart conditions, or who are with young and impressionable children. We ask that you turn around in your seats. Will Ferrell, who plays Lord Business slash President Business. When you're scraping the bottle of the barrel, you find yourself with a Will Ferrell. Uh, and what's unusual about that is, is that usually he has a pretty expansive comedy gang that yeah. he just did not bring with him mm -hmm. on this one. Satisfies the people, makes sure they're, you know, they're happy enough to where they won't have, have any other extraneous thoughts that may kind of Get in the way of also, we have from Parks and Rec, we have Nick Offerman. I challenge you to find something I won't do. And Chris Pratt. I'd like to remake the movie Kazam with Shaquille O'Neal where he plays a genie and I'd like to get it right. Watch it, boy! You don't want to diss me or I'll dish out my misery. Uh, Andy and, of course, Ron Swanson. And I went to this website and this ad popped up that said, Hey, Ron Swanson. What's your question? My question is, what the hell? Like, how do they know who you are? Yeah. Chris Pratt played the, uh, did the voice of Emmett, the main character. Uh, yes. That's me. Uh, Rakowski? Just say Smith again, it don't matter. None of this matters. Also, um, if you don't know, Chris Pratt is also going to be in the Guardians of, Guardians of the Galaxy movie. Star-Lord! Half-Earthling, half-alien royalty. Who? 
Well, Star Lord, man, legendary outlaw. Forget it. This is gonna be a big year for Chris Pratt. Oh yeah, absolutely. I, I'm, I'm, let me let me just throw that up and call it out right now. I don't know how much bigger it's going to be because he was in Zero Dark Thirty last year. Okay, so how do you know it's Bin Laden? Bin Laden is there, and you're gonna kill him for me. On the other side of that coin, which I believe that there are two shows that are on different sides of the coin, mm -hmm. uh, Community, we have, from Community, we have Allison Brie. Boopy doopy doop boop sex. <laughs> she plays Unikitty in this. This movie is totally for adults as much as it is for kids. Sex. <laughs> Also involved in the project are the guys from Lonely Island, particularly uh, Jorma. My name is Jorma, motherfucker, the sensitive one. Breaking my face with the butt of my gun. Uh, who does the voice of Shakespeare, who is one of the master builders as part of the resistance. Uh, but also the, the three Lonely Island guys also contributed to the theme song of the movie. Uh, everything is awesome. Feel more awesome than an awesome possum. Dip my body in chocolate frosting. Three years later, I shot the frosting. Smelling like a blossom. Everything is awesome. Uh, I mean, from guys that wrote a song called I Just Had Sex. Never guess where I just came from. I had sex. If I had to describe the feeling, it was the best. Mm -hmm. We have them uh, part of a song for a kids movie. Great. <laughs> awesome. Could, could, couldn't have done it better. <laughs> you know, for kids. Many of you remember from back in 2012, it was something of a sleeper hit, uh, 21 Jump Street. Uh, not a lot of expectations on my behalf for that movie, yeah. and it just entertained the shit out of me. It was uh, pretty funny. The director of that, Phil Lord, is one of the story guys here on the Lego movie. Yeah, he directed and wrote the screenplay. Excellent, excellent. And with him, uh, he brought Jonah Hill and Channing Tatum from 21 Jump Street. Don't worry, Superman. I'll get you out no, of there. Don't! Oh my gosh, my hands are stuck. My legs are stuck as well. I super hate you. Uh, who, in this movie, they play uh, Superman and, uh, and Green Lantern. I have to go back to Krypton. And we also have Charlie Day from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Oh, I love that guy. Wild card, bitches! Yeah! What? As uh, 80 Spaceman. I think we could use wings and rocket boosters. Ew, get your retro space stuff out of my area. There are countless other people in this movie that are just from something that's popular with adults. I voiced the character of Bad Cup. Oh, so you've never heard of the prophecy? No, I... Or the special... No, no, You're I'm... a liar. I need you to be focused. It's, it's been fun. Again, we already threw up the spoiler alert, so mm -hmm. you should know this, but uh, there is a actual, like, live-action child in the movie, and he plays the voice of Cubby on Jake and the Neverland Pirates, otherwise known as the show that ruins our search on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So, in addition to all these other properties that are thrown into this movie, just, you know, piecemeal, mm -hmm. uh, and again, spoilers, uh, the fucking Millennium Falcon shows up at some point. Awesome! Which is totally sweet. And they actually got two of the original voice actors from the original trilogy. They got uh, Anthony Daniels as C-3PO. Mm -hmm. And uh, Billy Dee Williams as Lando Calrissian. Welcome, Leia. And he even lays the Mac down on the main lady Hard. character. <laughs> because that's, that's just who Lando is. That's what he does! He's the smoothest son of a bitch in space! <laughs> You look absolutely beautiful. Lego is across franchises. We actually had uh, a number of other ones as well. There was Gandalf mm -hmm. from Lord of the Rings. We had uh, Dumbledore. Dumbledore from Harry Potter. Yeah, and they were this close to putting Marvel in there. Mm -hmm. Although we do have our Marvel connection. Yes, we do. Um, we have Robin from How I Met Your Mother. I know having fun is what it's all about. Or otherwise known as... Uh, Maria Hill, Agent Maria Hill of S.H.I.E.L.D. A lot of people have to answer for that. She does the voice of Wonder Woman. To the Batmobile! Dang it. To the Invisible Jet! Dang it. Which is kind of a kind of a nice little... little eh, you get it? Yeah. Oh, I get it! I get jokes. <laughs> Will Arnett's Batman. I play Batman. He's not playing you know, a straight up Batman. He's not like Adam West Batman. It's his own Batman. Yeah, it's his own Batman. It's a it's a joke Batman. Some days you just can't get rid of a bomb. They're taking the most recent dark side of Batman. I swear to God. Swear to me. The more more popular characterization of Batman. I'm not wearing hockey pants. Well, you know, I mean, he's, he's having fun with it. You know, yeah. as you see him in the trailer, he's like, huh, 
<laughs> throw, yeah. throw in Batarang. It's like, <laughs> first try. Like, I don't know. Like, I've never seen Batman do that, but it's yeah. funny. It's a, it's a little light touch. I like it. He's, he's got a lot of, there's a lot of jokes about him, like, I only build it black. And sometimes very, very dark gray. Well, I think what, what really was the guiding light here is, is that a subtle hand works best. I mean, we got a little Star Wars, but just for that one scene. We got a little bit of uh, DC with having Batman in there, and Superman and Green Lantern and Wonder Woman show up, like we said, but they kind of go off in their own direction. Hey, you gotta keep moving forward. That's the whole point of things. And thank you now, I appreciate it. Relying too heavy on any of the other crossovers that are like major properties really could have, uh, you know, hung things up for them. Um, and in this way, it was just really nice little lot of little nods and little pokes and everything, and it just came across like everyone was playing really well together. They don't just have the property, and that's the joke. It's not like Scary Movie, where it's like, ha ha, Wonder Woman, you get it? Yeah, she's Wonder Woman! Or like huh? the, those, those, uh, all those, all the bastard children, like Epic Movie and Super Movie and the... Uh... Nobody just walks in and says, hi, I'm so-and-so. You'll pay for this, Belboa. See what you got. And, and then, it's like, yeah! <laughs> Alright, so this is your last chance to bail. We really want to kind of to discuss it because it's a big, you know, discussion point. So, this is your last chance. Uh, go to the time code Whoop. down here if you want to skip over this and preserve your own surprise. Yeah, yeah. So basically, as it turns out, well, the Lego universe is actually all set up on a series of tables in Will Ferrell's basement. Nice fucking model! Will Ferrell doubles as the human that has created all these Legos. Mm -hmm. He's presumably the owner and creator of all these Legos. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, when you get a look at the room, yeah, there's all these wooden tables with everything on it. You see, like, uh, big drawers, like, with pull-out drawers with, like, odd pieces He's, and so forth. He is serious He's a serious-ass collector. I am the architect. Yeah. Which, I would like to argue he isn't, because anyone worth their salt that knows about Legos and is a master builder themselves, and is totally into Legos, would never in a million years super glue all their shit together. Bless Bieber! Yeah. Um, <laughs> as we mentioned earlier, he's trying to freeze everything in, in, in its correct state forever, and he's going to use a special uh, relic from some other civilization called a Kraggle. That's not a thing! Boy, did I just date myself. But what this is, this is actually crazy glue, and it is a analog uh, within the context of the Lego story for uh, Will Ferrell's character uh, as the as the human who is going to lock everything down with the super glue, so that way none of his none of his Legos can be taken apart and reconstituted and constituted into something yeah. else. And then peace will reign. So then we find out that all of the craziness that's going on with all the master builders and things and the prophecy and all those kinds of things is actually, uh, it's all created in the mind, assumedly, mm -hmm. of the kid. He sits there all day long in his own world, staring at that toy. And you can think of this as a straight fantasy of the kids, mm -hmm. that he came up with this whole storyline up until that point by himself. He, you know, he went to the basement, he found all of his dad's toys, he wanted to play, you know, he wanted to play with the Legos, because, mm -hmm. you know, they're Legos, what the fuck? They just love new toys, now don't they? And he knows that his dad is going to glue everything together, but he doesn't want that to happen, because he wants to play with all these sweet Legos, so, you know, he comes up with the story where Emmett has to save everyone, and... He's and taking things out of this part of, like, the Lego tables and bringing it over here, and mixing yeah. and matching stuff. He's messing with everything, and, and Will Ferrell is... Uh, he shows up, and he's, like, pissed. He's furious. What is going on? You stop building that stuff! Just stop it! Because this kid's like playing around with it and stuff, but right before that, Emmett throws himself out of the building in the Lego universe and like ends up in a void. And the void just happens to be like off the table, like he's on the ground. Now. Yeah, it's it's a noble sacrifice. He, he was able to save everybody else by sacrificing himself. And now he has emerged as a minifig in this new upper, you know, level. It, it does raise a serious question over what exactly happened here. But, in my opinion, because of the fact that Emmett still had inner thoughts when he emerged into the, the human world as like a layer above the Lego world, if you will, yeah. um, you know, he still had his own uh, independent thoughts and he still had, you know, his will to live and fight and try to save everything. Ah, whoa, 
What's happening? Who am I? Why am I here? What's my purpose in life? What do I mean by who am I? But but then also like at some point he's on the Emmett is on the table. Uh, the dad picks him up and puts him on the table, and he's like, "I'm gonna try to move," and like he can't move. And here's the point where the movie could have gotten ridiculous, and then Emmett could have just like jumped up and been what? like, "Hey, I'm alive!" And then you know the dad and the kid are like, "What the Whoa! fuck?" And it's like, "Oh, we gotta you know respect these Lego people because they're all alive and whatnot." And they could have really fucked, just botched it completely. Mm -hmm. But they didn't. Uh, he moves a little bit. So the kid picks up uh, the Emmett minifig and puts it back into the Lego world, which then basically makes Emmett re-enter the Lego world where he can then try to, you know, rise to the occasion again and put a stop to things. But what's interesting is, is that what Emmett does is sort of the in-story universe way of what happens in the human world right. playing itself out. And I don't think that either one becomes invalid. I don't, you know, it's a reflection, but... Yeah, there, I, I, I don't know. There's it agency. Bugs me a, it bugs there's me a agency. little bit, but there's not enough agency. to ruin it for me. Knock it off! Woods, knock it off! Woods, knock it off! Boys, for the last time, stop! It is really poignant. I, you know, uh, father-son movies, I mean, I, I cry every time I see Big Fish. I'll gets tell you me. that right Oh, gets me uh, time. Right here. Right here. And the strange thing is there's not a sad face to be found. Everyone is just so glad to see you. And send you off right. Goodbye, everybody. Yeah, there are little quirks in the movie that I really liked. That it wasn't, they weren't trying to sell you Legos either. So, kids, get your Lego set now. No. That was another big thing. They really didn't take you out of the story to try to sell you something. There were cool builds in the movie. Like, the very first thing that they, that builds during the action is. Uh, it's a big ridiculous like uh, motorcycle. motorcycle. It's like a Tetsuo bike. Yeah. Kaneda! And it's sweet and it's rolling through the streets and stuff and they didn't really try to sell you that bike. It wasn't like, oh, this bike's so sweet. Like, they didn't reference it a whole bunch. In fact, it gets torn to pieces at some point. Right, and then you know. built into something else. Tetsuo! Right. And, you know, they, they weren't constantly trying to sell you any character or anything. You know, you might go to the store and find that thing. And, and you be can. Like, oh, it's in, yeah, no, they, they have that specific go type as a Lego set. At department and toy stores everywhere. But they did reference their product very well, like we said before. Also, uh, all the master builders have this kind of, like, matrix vision, where they can see each piece as its serial number. Because if you're familiar with Legos, each each Lego piece has some sort of designation. Mm -hmm. So they can see all the pieces and be like, oh, this that's piece is That's a piece 113596. Yeah, yeah, whatever. The, that's the long piece with four yeah, dimples. Or... You, you don't know. It's just going along. There, there are a lot of visual gags that have to do with Legos that work really well. Like all the relics that Lord Business saves, they're all from the real world. Like yeah, the exact like zero the, knife. The craggle, the Polish remover of Nail. <laughs> yeah, like these are all things that you would interact with your Legos with for the most part. Mostly. One of, one of my favorite uh, visual gags in the movie is Morgan Freeman's character, Vitruvius. Mm, just listen to that rich molasses. Uh, he dies. But then he comes back as a ghost and they use the ghost Lego piece. Yeah, with like his, the, with the his thing like, that like goes up mold. over it. Yeah. yeah. And then they have him like on a, a paper clip or a string or something. And it's, and he's and just it's like, like dangling and dangling like he, he swings a little bit <laughs> yeah. like, you know. Like, like somebody's him. holding him. Right. You know. Oh, I get it. I get jokes. <laughs> and then and it's, and it's totally obvious and unabashed and they're not ashamed of that at all. Yeah. And, and and that's kind of one of like my big takeaways from this is is that they were completely unashamed of that they were playing with Legos yeah. to make a movie. Now were you Lego fans growing up? Yeah, uh, of course. You know. No, that that was the point of the movie was to play with Legos. Again, yeah, again, going back to what we said initially, it could have easily been like they could have used all of these different sections and they had to go adventure. It would have been a, a self-enclosed universe mm -hmm. of Lego people and they all operate on Legos and with Legos. The whole world is created out of Lego bricks, or as I like to call them, bricks. They have to go get some sort of relic and it saves their world or whatever. They never breach the, you know, mm -hmm. you know, they wouldn't have done a joke with the ghost on the string if 
it had been like that, it would have been all CG, it would have been, you know, the same kind of shit. Again, if they had taken the story and ended it differently without the inclusion of the human characters, then, you know, it, it would have been your run-of-the-mill shit. Some of the jokes would have been pretty good, I don't think it would have been very rewarding at the end, so... No. So, but they don't do that, and and that's the brilliance of this movie is, again, it's it's poking fun at itself. You know, I think that's so important considering how many movies really take themselves so fucking seriously. Mm -hmm. It's all grim, dark shit. But all not this. the time, but not this. This it's is bright and shiny, and, and it's it, having fun it, with it, itself. And it's positive, and it's awesome. Awesome! Awesome! Everything is awesome. It's awesome. Um, so I think that about wraps it up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, definitely go see this one. It's going to be well worth your, worth your time, even if you're not a big Lego head, if you're not a Brigster, you know, you could still get a lot of enjoyment out of oh, yeah. this. Yes, it's true. So, for Jake and Trev Review Everything, I'm Trev. And I'm Jake. And thanks for watching. Well, if we learned anything from this movie, it's that it's cool when you're part of a team? Are we part of a team? We are part of a team! Team Peanut Butter Disaster! I thought I told you guys not to call me again. Whoa, hey! <laughs> Alright, you dragon teaming. We are going down this top. Oh! Hey, guys! He can't see without his glasses. What's up? Oh, hey guys, Movie Doctor Online. Team, we need your help. We're trying to build a pander. A uh, what? what? Huh? Never mind your what's. We need a thing from each of you to build our pander. Tom, you got anything for us? A DVD of the 1999 Robin Williams film Bicentennial Man. As luck would have it, I have a copy right here. Rhinus? Ah. Uh... Let's see what we got behind the bar doing here. Um, Plato, Crockpot Top, Golden Conducting Rod from Nick the Tesla's Death Ray, Lint Roller. Whoa! Whoa, 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 whoa. Back to the other yeah. thing that you just had. The other one. I really don't understand how that's gonna help. No, no, no. We'll take it. We'll take it. Dirtbag, what do you got for us? Hmm. Let's see what's in the trench coat. Izzy wizzy, let's get dizzy! Yes, this little harp thing is my contribution! Wait, that? It was either this or Slayer Records! Eh, I guess it could work. What about you, Carrie? You got any sweet ninja stuff for us? I got coffee. Uh, I mean, sure, it might not look like much, but... I don't know, I had a little orange juice, maybe some bacon grease, a little bit of weapons grade plutonium. This could make a decent fuel source. Hell, I'm pretty sure the TARDIS might run on this. We also have one of those as well. Weird. Oh. Robbie, you got anything for the pander? Well, no pander thing wouldn't be complete without a spatula. You mean one of these? No, 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 no. This is a spatula. Well, excuse me, Elton Brown. I assume you mean one of these, then. Yes, he can be taught. Huh, you got anything you can add to the pander? Or, I mean, you're a smart guy. Any, any tips? Hmm. Well, I'd start by connecting the Faraday Convergenator here to the Influx Adjuster. That alone will give you 50 more RPMs to the ocular coherence topographer. And if you use the turbulent and isomotrope, you'll be golden. Oh, totally! We we won't forget any of that. Huh? Be careful when you get back. Thanks, everyone! Now we just have to build it! Let's do it!
finished. But do you think it works? There's only one way to find out. Alright, let's call those jerk butts in the opposite dimension. Yeah, and stick it to them. Yeah. Man, so the other night I took Evil Laura, you know, the one with the... The big! Yeah, yeah. And I tried grabbing him and I squeezed him. You squeezed him and you went whoop! <laughs> yeah, and she punched me in the head, man. Did you, uh, do him like this? <laughs> yeah, then she kicked me in the balls, man. Ha <laughs> ha! Wait, what? Who's a what's it? Ha <laughs> ha! We interrupted you! Yeah, I bet you guys were saying stuff to each other. Except now you're not because we were the ones! Yeah! <laughs> Yeah. Suck it, losers! Oh, uh, you guys are full of bad. <laughs> so you were saying, about your balls. Oh, 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 oh. oh we got those bastards. Oh, oh, we sure did. Do you, do you think we should get a hold of Good Jake and Trap and tell them we finally made a bander? Uh, yeah. They're gonna love hearing about this. What butt? Um, you know, don't worry about it. It's probably just us again. Time is still all kerfuffle. <laughs> Kerfuffle. Time. Time is kerfuffle. <laughs> That's a British word. Did I use it right, dirtbag? Yeah, sure. Um, salmon fish and chips to me, Macy. Bloody yanks. Tom? Oh, all this fucking aggro you're giving me. Up and on all the bleeding time, sunshine. You're lucky I don't come over there and send you ass over tip, then we'll see what words come out what from your yank hole. Now piss off, I've got to go spend a penny. Robbie? Seriously? British? With this accent? Right? I live where you guys live! Gira? British Columbia... isn't Britain. And also, I don't live there. Pat? What? Oh, um... Good day, mate. Let's throw another shrimp on the box. not British. Nailed it! Yeah. yeah. Last high five of the episode, we swear. Yeah, let's go investigate. <laughs> yeah, let's go in all creeped out and drunk. Peanut butter disaster. <laughs>